All right, welcome to the differential equations video. We are going to be talking about the differential equations, FRQ. All right, first thing, these show up nearly every year. Usually what happens is you're given a differential equation, you're asked to find a tangent line, an approximation using that tangent line, and the particular solution given some initial value. And then they'll fill it out either with slope fields or maybe they'll do like a rate question or some implicit differentiation, something else, just something else random. Uh, things to watch out for or to remember, if you're asked for a slope, you should only give the slope. You don't give the whole tangent line because that's not what they're asking for. They're not going to search through your tangent line and say, oh, they meant for this to be the slope. Answer the question that's being asked of you. Don't answer the question you think that you're supposed to answer. Um, on differential equations, there are a lot of easy points. Even if you can't figure out the antiderivatives, you can at least get yourself one point just by separating the variables. <clears throat> and do not forget plus C. Typically, these are going to be worth five points, maybe six. The max you're going to be allowed to get is three if you don't put that plus C. So important. It's not that plus C gets you a point. It's just you're not allowed any more points if you don't put plus C. All right, let's go ahead and get into one. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals three minus y cosine of x. F of x is the particular solution with initial condition f of zero equals one. The function f is defined for all real numbers. Part A, a portion of the slope field of the differential equation is given below. Sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. So remember, when you're given a slope field, what you do is you go to the point that they tell you to. So that's right here. If you don't put that point, you're automatically wrong. It has to go through that. Other than that, you just follow the train tracks. So it looks something like that. I mean, I drew it horribly, and that's still pretty much right. As long as you roughly follow what the slope field is telling you to do. All right, part B, write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve in part A at the point 0, 1. Use the equation to approximate f of point 2. So what I want to point out real quick, a lot of people make this mistake. This is not going in for your tangent line. It will in a second, but it's not right now. What we're going to do first, we need to do a tangent line that's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. x1 is 0, y1 is 1. <clears throat> So y minus 1 equals, we'll leave that blank because we're going to get it in a second, x minus 0. Now to get m, to get the slope of the tangent line, you just plug in the ordered pair right here. So I'm going to do 3 minus 1 times cosine of 0. So that's 2 times 1. So 2 is my slope. All right. Now that I have my tangent line, I need to use it to approximate f of point 2. So I'm just going to plug point 2 in for x. All right, so point 2 times 2 is going to be point 4. Move the 1 over, you get y equals 1.4. There we go. Part C, find y equals f of x, the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of 0 equals 1. All right, this right here, this is the bulk of the problem. I'm going to zoom in, that way I get lots of room to do this, because this is where the primary points are coming for on this FRQ. All right, first thing we do whenever we solve a differential equation is separate the variables. So I know I need to move this over and I need to move this over. So I'm gonna say dy over three minus y equals cosine of x dx. Okay, now I need to anti-differentiate both sides. So the left side is the tricky one on this one. Let me change colors. Um, I need to find the integral of one over three minus y dy. Now, you have some options. You can do a u sub, maybe you can take a shortcut. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write out the u substitution. So it'd be u equals three minus y. du then would be negative one dy. Well, if I look at the integral that I have, I don't have that negative one, so I'll just move it to the other side. So then this becomes the integral of negative one over u du, which is of course negative natural log of absolute value of u plus c. Well, so I'm not gonna put the plus c because I know I'm gonna put it on the other side with the x. So I won't put it there, which is just negative natural log absolute value of three minus y. 
So again, we're supposed to put plus C, but I know I'm going to put it on the X side. So I'm not going to put it on this that we just did. So erase that line that shouldn't have been there. So that gives me negative natural log absolute value 3 minus Y equals the antiderivative of cosine is sine of X plus C. Okay. Now I need to figure out what C is. So the way I figure out what C is, is I take this and I plug that into what I have so far. So X is zero, Y is one. So negative natural log of three minus one is two. Sine of zero plus C. Okay, so sine is zero, zero. So that means that C just is negative ln of two. Okay, let me change colors because now we're on to probably the hardest part, which is actually solving for y. So we have negative natural log absolute value 3 minus y equals sine of x minus ln of 2. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this negative sign that's right here on the left-hand side by going natural log absolute value 3 minus y equals I like to just swap them, but really I'm making the sine negative and the natural log a two positive. So like that. Now I'm gonna get rid of the natural log on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna E both sides. Okay, now at this point you have options. If this is a multiple choice, you need to take care of the fact that this has e to the natural log of two. I'm gonna leave it for now and I'll go back and show you what you can do instead. Um, but what I do have to figure out is, I need to get rid of these absolute value bars. So I need to figure out, should it be plus e to the whatever that stuff is, or should it be minus e? So that's the way we get rid of absolute value bars, right? We say three minus y equals plus or minus e to the natural log of two minus sine of x. So what I'm going to do to figure out which one it's supposed to be is I'm going to plug in the initial condition again and it feels like oh my gosh why do I keep doing this but we need to so we can figure it out. So 3 minus 1 equals e to the natural log of 2 minus sine of 0 so that's 2 equals two equals, uh, well this goes away, right? And then e to the natural log of two is just two. So now I see, did I need the plus version of that two or did I need the minus? Well, I need the plus. So now I know which one it's supposed to be. I'm gonna go up here and finish it. I know I'm getting all kinds of all over the place. Uh, three minus y equals e to the natural log of two minus sine of x. Now I need to move the three over, so negative y equals negative three plus e to the natural log of two minus sine of x. And then I need to get rid of the negative sign. y equals three minus e to the natural log of two minus sine of x. This was a kind of difficult one. It's just was there was a lot of algebra in solving for y. But there it is. Now, so that is the answer. If you don't want to see the rest part, the rest of it, you can just say, bye, I'm done. But on multiple choice, I was mentioning this natural log of two right here, right? We have to take care of that. So y equals three minus e to the natural log of two. When you have um, addition and subtraction in exponents, what you do is you just break it out like this. So now I can actually say that that's 3 minus 2e to the negative sine of x. You can't cancel that e with a natural log of 2 until you split it up like that. So again, this answer right here would have been fine. This is more like a multiple choice answer. That said, I don't really see this caliber of a problem being multiple choice. It was just too challenging. Whew. All right, so solving for y was a ridiculous amount of work, but... If we look at the scoring guidelines, which there's your solution curve, you get one point for separating the variables. 
You get one point for each of the antiderivatives, one point for getting the constant of integration, one point for using the initial condition to get the constant of integration, and that last point is solving for y. So if you're terrified of the algebra, just be careful in the calculus part, and you can still get most of the points. All right, so here's that solution curve once again. I, like I said, I drew mine really badly, but I got the gist of it. Tangent line equation, approximation, etc. All right, good luck on your differential equations. You got it.